right, welcome to chapter three. This is part one. So, um, and this chapter is called Bacteria and Archaea. So um, this is the only chapter we'll really kind of talk about Archaea. Um, and even so, we won't talk much about it. So you're just gonna hear a lot about bacteria and a little blip about Archaea a couple different times. All right, so um, an overview. Um, how organisms are different from eukaryotes, these specific organisms, how they are different from eukaryote uh, cells. So how they're different is the way their DNA is packaged, lack of nucleus and histones in the bacteria and archaea in comparison to the eukaryotes, the makeup of their cell wall, peptidoglycan and other unique chemicals are found in bacteria and archaea, their internal structures, lack of membrane-bound organelles in bacteria and archaea. And again, that's in comparison to the eukaryote cells. So all bacterias, um, sorry, all bacterial cells possess a cytoplasmic membrane, um, a cytoplasm, ribosomes, cytoskeleton, one or a few chromosomes, and then most bacterial cells possess a cell wall and also a surface coating called a glycocalyx, which we will talk more about after a little bit. Some structures found, um, or structures found in some bacteria, um, flagella and pili, fimbrae. We're gonna learn all about what these, what each of these things are coming through this, this uh, PowerPoint, this chapter three. Um, and outer membrane, nanowires or nanotubes, plasmids, inclusions, endospores, micro compartments, and many of these um, are observed in archaeas, archaea cells as well. So this is the kind of generic structure of a bacterial cell. It has everything listed that any given bacterial cell might have. So there, I don't know that there's any bacteria that has every single one of these parts. Um, they're just listing them all on this generic cell just so you can kind of see all the different parts. So this is in your book as well. So you can always reference that and, and look at all the little purple boxes there with all the information. But we're going to go over that individually as we move through this as well bacterial shapes and arrangements. So that means the actual shape of the bacteria itself and then how they are arranged. So, um, and basically, you know, bacteria can be arranged in, in groups of two, groups of four, they can be long chains, they can be clusters of grape-like shapes. So um, there's lots of ways that they can be arranged. Um, in addition to different bacteria may have different shapes. So um, bacteria function, at least most bacteria function as single celled unicellular organisms. So they're, they're like their own kind of individual critter. Um, they don't all, there are some that work as kind of an army, but we'll talk about those in a little bit. Um, so, um, and actually the first line there, some act as group as a group in colonies or biofilms. Um, so they're gonna do, they're gonna kind of act like an army and they're gonna be stronger and harder to get rid of if they are working together in something like a biofilm. Um, some bacteria have the ability to communicate through something we call nanotubes. And we'll talk about those in a moment. The average size, um, is about one micron. Um, the uh, two different shapes that we'll, we'll look at in a moment also are the cocci and the rods. So that word cocci that is right here, you, you don't want to call that cocci because then I think that you're talking about your, your, your head is cockeyed on your body or something like that. Um, it's pronounced cocci or rods, depending on what we're talking about. And a cocci type shape bacteria, <clears throat> a cocci shaped bacteria are round like a softball or a baseball. At least for the most part, they can have some, some variations in that shape, but generally speaking, they're gonna be round-ish. And rods are more rod-like, and I always describe them as kind of like a traditional Tylenol, like an extra strength Tylenol, 
um, is, you know, longer than it is wide. Um, and they vary in, these vary a little bit in, in size. Pleomorphism is when cells, uh, there's variations in cell wall structure, and that's caused by slight genetic or nutritional differences. Just like, you know, you have, you know, two, two animals born at the same time, and one is, you know, not given the same nutrients that the other, there can be, you know, some differences between them. And that's the same idea with bacteria. So more on bacterial shape, if the cell is spherical or ball shaped, the bacterium is described as a coccus or cocci, depending on if we're talking about plural or singular versions of the term. <clears throat> cocci can be perfect spheres, but they can also exist as oval, bean shape, or even pointed variants. The picture of the purple um, bacteria there is actually Staphylococcus. So you can see it's kind of clustered up, and we're going to talk about that. But um, these are uh, the uh, arrangement is a Staphylo arrangement, which um, usually looks like clusters of grapes. Um, and so when we say Staphylococcus, that's our way of describing that we know it's clusters and we know it's cocci, so it must be clusters of cocci. So a little re reverting back to medical terminology there. So these are clusters of cocci. Uh, more on bacterial shape, a cell that is cylindrical is termed a rod or bacillus. Those terms are interchangeable, bacillus and rod. However, don't let that throw you off because unfortunately they've also named a specific bacterial species, bacillus um, or genus bacillus. Um, and so that can confuse people. The bacillus subtilis um, is a type of bacteria that is a bacillus, as in its shape is bacillus, but it just so happens that they also happen to name that particular bacteria bacillus. So that can be confusing, but um, rods are quite varied in their actual form, and it depend, depending on the species, species, they can be blocky, spindle-shaped, round-ended, long and thread-like, sometimes filamentous, or even club-shaped, or drumstick shaped. So pretty much it can look like almost anything, but you know, to the trained eye, it becomes fairly easy to recognize these under the microscope. When a rod is short and plumped, they a lot of times call it a cocobacillus, which is a fun little word if you're into, um, you know, science words. Um, so the picture, the image there on the right is Legionella um, pneumophilia. All right, so there are also bacteria that are gently curved and they're called Vibrio. And a lot of times you're going to, these are more like the, the ones that I'm aware of, the ones that I know of are the ones that kind of live in the water and they kind of um, make you, you know, sick from, from the water. So we never want to get Vibrio. I'm sure there's some, some that are harmless, but um some probably that aren't. So uh, another bacterial shape is spirillum or spirillium. Um, it is a spiral shaped, has a spiral shaped body, a rigid helix twisted twice or more along its axis like a corkscrew. And the picture shown here is Campylobacter jejuni. And another bacterial shape um, this one is called a spirochete, and the spirochete contains what they refer to as a periplasmic flagella, which is, we'll talk about this later too, but a periplasmic flagella is found um, underneath, I believe it's the, underneath the cytoplasm. So you can imagine if the flagella, which is the, the, the part of the cell that makes it mobile or motile, if you will, um, is kind of underneath the skin, then, then it's suddenly kind of gyrating around in a weird way. Um, so this is uh, a flexible form that resembles a spring and the photo in, uh, on the right hand side is spirochetes. 
there are some bacteria that can produce um, filaments. Um, example is Streptomyces. It's a basic rod with some branching filaments. Something like that um, is if you're not used to what you're looking at, you can probably confuse it with some types of fungus, um, which is not necessarily accurate. Um, all right, so bacterial arrangements. As I mentioned before, if, you know, cocci um, can be arranged individually. They can just have single cocci all over. You know, if you make a slide and we look at it under the microscope, it can be single individual cocci. It can be um, arranged in pairs where there's two cocci stuck together. Um, and if it was groups of four, it would be tetrads. Um, irregular clusters, then we get into staphylococci. I don't really ever talk about micrococci very much um, because it's not something that, you know, I, I saw on a regular basis, but it's basically a much smaller cocci um, than typically seen. Um, and then, so remember, staphylo, it's going to be on the test probably, staphylo means clusters, okay? Cocci is your, 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 your tennis balls, right? Clusters of tennis balls. Strepto, okay, strepto, strept is like chains. It's, it means, um, I think there's a, a Latin word for that. I can't remember exactly what it is, but Strepto, it's like a strip of something, okay? So it's a strip of cocci or chains of cocci. So um, it's important that you remember those terms and what they mean, okay? Um, and then sarcina, um, cubicle packet of eight, 16 or more. So again, we could ask about um, sarcina or tetrads, but I'm more likely going to ask you questions about staphylo and strepto because those are really common with uh, the medical field and infections. So here's some pictures of what we just went over. Um, you have the single ones, the diplo, strepto, um, you know, a strip of them, um, tetrads, fours, sarcina, eight to 64, kind of packed in little squares. Um, and you can see how some of the bigger arrangements go. And it's kind of cool when that happens. Um, probably not for the patient, but, you know, as as the, the person looking in the microscope, it's always exciting to see something different. Um, and then staphylo is those clusters of grapes, right? Staph, staphylo, clusters, strepto, strip, or chain. So um, arrangement of bacilli. Um, we already went over this, but I didn't talk about palisades. So when we talk about palisades, it says here the chains or the cells of a chain remain partly attached. So think of it as like a hinge. It's like hinged over, closed over on itself. Um, so it's, you can see that, well, you can't really see that very well, but you can see this one here where it's kind of next to each other. And sometimes they're still bent a little bit. So the hinge won't be all the way closed. Um, so you should know what Palisades is as well. All right, so we're going to stop here and we'll pick up on the next part of this chapter, part two, in the next uh, recording.